the career of real estate and even real estate, the market, right? It's like the yeah. stock market. It's all unpredictable. We could have another crash. We could have another huge upsurge. You just never know. And there's certain ways we can study the market and predict that. But at the end of the day, the whole thing is unpredictable. And that definitely translates into the buying and selling process. I would say throughout the process from a client perspective, what's most important if you're thinking of making a move, whether that's buying or selling or maybe even renting, is just from the get-go having a mindset of embracing the process and level-setting expectations. Welcome to Spark Joy, the podcast dedicated to celebrating the Kamari method and the transformative power of surrounding yourself with joy and letting go of all the rest. With your hosts and certified Kamari consultants, Kristen Ivey and Karen Sochi. And now, here's the show. Today, we are turning our attention away from the possessions within our homes to the special relationship we have with the home itself. Buying and selling are two activities that can spark a wide range of emotions. So we called in an expert to help us view each process through a lens of joy. Kim Howard is a top producing Chicago real estate agent with Howard Homes Chicago, Keller Williams, that she co-founded with her husband, Joe. They focus on both the city of Chicago and select suburbs and have implemented a mindset of gratitude in their daily practice that helps them spark joy in both their personal and professional lives. Welcome to Spark Joy, Kim. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Welcome, Kim. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. Me too. So let's start with your journey to becoming a real estate maven. Was selling homes always something you were interested in? How did you get started in this business? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, from a younger age, I always knew that I loved selling people things. I was always coming up with creative ways to, as a child, even get my own way for things. I was very artistic at heart. I loved drawing and painting, you know, playing imaginary plays. So I always really related to, you know, the whole marketing and selling in general. So I, that translated to studying communications. I had a broadcast journalism major, which kind of tied the two together because I knew I loved talking with people, um, learning people's stories. So I did the on-air news for a bit, realized what I liked was the creative storytelling aspect but I really wasn't a huge fan of the process of sitting in a booth and doing the content and all the technical stuff. So I translated into a career in marketing. So again, kind of selling things throughout the way, ended up at a great Fortune 100 company that I was a marketing consultant at. And then one day I was just thinking through my life and my career choices. And my then fiance was kind of helping me make a list of things I'm good at and things I wanted to do. And he said, hey, you know, have you ever considered real estate? And I had considered it, but it was just a mere thought. And he's like, well, I think you'd be great. It'd be really wrong if you didn't do it. You have my full support. So within a month of making that decision and his encouragement, I quit my corporate job that I'd had almost four years and I just went all in with real estate. So it kind of chose me, so to speak, in that aspect. And I knew it was either going to be, you know, a major flop, you know, quitting a great job and then switching to 100% commission based sales, or it was going to be like, okay, this is something I can work with. And my first year was great. And it took off from there. And my husband joined me and now we're Howard Holmes. Wow, what a story. I've just counted so many different moments where you just took a risk, really just leapt into the unknown. Yeah, life is short. <laughs> yeah. And not only did you leave that job behind, but you also walked into a industry that is really defined by its unpredictability and uncertainty. And that's on the buying side and the selling side. So I would love to hear like a little bit more about any ways that you handle the various things that are out of your control when it comes to buying or selling a home. Yeah, the career of real estate and even real estate, the market, right? It's like the yeah. stock market. It's all unpredictable. We could have another crash. We could have another huge upsurge. You just never know. And there's certain ways we can study the market and predict that. But at the end of the day, the whole thing is unpredictable. And that definitely translates into the buying and selling process. 
I would say throughout the process from a client perspective, what's most important if you're thinking of making a move, whether that's buying or selling or maybe even renting, is just from the get-go having a mindset of embracing the process and level setting expectations. Just like anything in life, whether it's a lot of times we go back to the wedding planning example because it ties in so much for examples we can use that clients resonate with, but For example, you know, planning a wedding, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's something of joy, hopefully, (laughs) that will come out of that. So understanding that the home buying and selling process is the same way up front and that, you know, there might be some bumps along the way, but you have your sights set on the end goal. I think that's huge. Also, from a practical perspective, who you have on your team matters, your agent, your lender, your attorney, they can really make or break the process in terms of making sure it's smooth and as least stress as possible. I think a large part of that simply comes down to communication and making sure that the client is always in the know. So choosing your partners and making sure that they're always updating you, that you're never in the dark, I think that's a really simple way to kind of breed more joy than stress, so to speak. And then finally, I think, you know, again, the unknown is hard. But just being excited for the end goal, I think, is really just huge. And if you keep remembering that throughout the challenging aspects, I think that you can definitely spark more joy. Yeah, I think it's definitely the unpredictability of buying a home or or selling a home that is so challenging. I have owned four homes in my life, four. Okay. Right. So the first house I ever owned, I had, I built it. So at that point, the transaction was just for the land. Then I own a home in Kansas City, I owned a home in Philadelphia, and now I own a home in New York City. And each one of those experiences was a great learning experience, but it was so unpredictable. You know, selling the homes in between as well, you just never know what's going to happen. And being prepared for both good and bad things is really, I think, kind of the key part of the process because... um, you know, in each one of those situations, everything turned out fine at the end, but there were some really stressful moments throughout the whole process. So let's talk about buying specifically. When you have clients that are in the kind of the zone of buying a new home, what are some of the critical first steps that you really feel a buyer should do first in order to make sure that they feel grounded and, you know, ready to proceed given that there are so many twists and turns along the way? Yeah, great question. So the good news for buyers is where we are right now, just in our world, is there are so many resources online. So you kind of can get a head start opposed to, you know, if you were house hunting or selling 20 or 30 years ago, there's so many things online. All the TV shows are out there, which by the way, are not accurate. (laughs) Like to plug (laughs) that, they're great to watch for entertainment, but most people look, for example, at more than three houses before they make a decision. Sometimes hundreds of houses. (laughs) Yeah. Hundreds, yes. I mean, everyone's different. So I think going back to my uh, last question, first and foremost, hate to sound like a broken record, but making sure you have people on your team who are explaining that process and expectations overall. And then from a tactical perspective, the very, very first step, going back to the wedding example, is we want to go wedding dress shopping. Most people wouldn't (laughs) unless they had an engagement, right? So our engagement, so to speak, in the buying world is a pre-approval. Most people get a mortgage. So with that, you want to make sure that you talk to a lender to make sure all of your ducks are in a row. And one way that you can kind of even get in front of that is making sure you're checking your credit regularly. Because so many times, I can't even tell you, clients come to us, they start the pre-approval process, they're ready to buy in one to two months. And then what happens is there's a ding on their credit that they didn't know about, or it's inaccurate. And those things take time to fix. So from a practical perspective, staying on top of your credit is huge because that will impact your mortgage rate as well as your ability to qualify. When I first started in this business, for example, just a little bit of a story, you know, I'm a type of person I want to give people the benefit of the doubt. So people would come to us and especially being a newer agent, you know, we want to get the sale. We want to help them. We want to find their dream home. You know, sometimes you take people at face value where, oh, I can afford, you know, a $300,000 home and, you know, we'll deal with the pre-approval later. So after a couple of times of doing that, just a career learning for me was, you know, it really hurts the client if they go fall in love with the property that they love. And then quickly we put them through the pre-approval process, which with a great lender can take 24 hours or less. 
And then lo and behold, oh no, there's something wrong on their credit or their identity got stolen. And that is just a huge joy killer. (laughs) Not good to fall in Mm -hmm. love with something and then it's off the market, especially in today's quick pace. So definitely practically the first must is making sure that your financial house is in order. And then I would also add thinking through practically, are you in an emotional spot? You know, are you planning a wedding? Are you switching jobs? Are you doing something else in your life that is going to take a lot of time and energy? Because we always want to tell our clients it is a journey. It could be easy. It could be hard. There could be bumps. It could be smooth, depending on external factors. But you want to make sure you have the time and energy to dedicate to the home buying process as well. Kim, those are great tips. And I can second that you mentioned reality TV and the TV show is about home buying. I recorded with a friend of mine who was looking for her first place uh, and she was selected by HGTV to be on one of the shows and I was her sounding board. Oh, awesome. It was a really cool experience. The show didn't ultimately air, but it was so interesting to see the behind the scenes of reality TV and how there were certain homes that we walked into that she had already seen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. And she really had to narrow it down to like three locations. And I think she had almost already signed with one before they even aired or talked about filming the episode. So yeah, it is definitely a peek into some of the emotional side of home buying, but Not necessarily reality, but what is. (laughs) Exactly. And from a production standpoint, I mean, the process for some home buyers, it could take two weeks. We've done, we've sold a home in as little as, you know, five days, or it could take a year. So they definitely, from the production standpoint, (laughs) it's definitely staged in a way, but it definitely makes for good television. Yes, definitely. And we've experienced creative liberties now that uh, Kanmari has been also featured as a reality TV show. And I love that you're echoing the importance of realizing that this is a process and it does require you to make time for it. And it does require you to make it a priority over some other things that may also be happening in your life. I know that recently you purchased a home as well with your husband. We did. Congratulations. How did that process go? Yeah, it's going well. So it's our second home. When we first got married, we purchased a flip. It was a ground floor unit um, in Evanston, actually. And we flipped it, did the work ourselves, which talk about doing things at a good time and understanding processes. You know, when you just get married and you come home and your father-in-law, you come back from your honeymoon and your first <laughs> night in your new home, your father-in-law is sleeping on the couch because he's helping with the floors. Probably not the best timing, but it, it was definitely a fun process and we embraced it. So we sold that. And then right now it is our second home. So it's going well. It's definitely, you know, being in the trenches emotionally and, you know, even financially, like everything we tell our clients we're going through. So we've definitely done it firsthand and it's still just as up and down as ever. No, that's always exciting. It's so exciting to kind of know where things are heading. And given your experience, it's probably a little easier to navigate all those little twists and turns. So are you getting to pick all of the paint and your finishes and the flooring and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, oh, yeah. That's so fun. It's, uh, it's really fun. And it's like, oh, I thought that counter would go with with this backsplash. And when you do it, it's it's definitely a process because it feels so permanent when you're choosing your own finishes. But it's really fun. And fortunately, we agree on most things. I Good. will tell you, a lot of clients we have who are married, they agree on most things, but there's always differences. So it's definitely a a journey in terms of compromise too. So I got to give him some wins and he's got to give me some wins. (laughs) And then our end product will be for both of us. I think that's such a good point. I know that both my husband and I have very, very strong opinions about what we were going to do when we did our renovation of our apartment. And I think it's really important that you both kind of consider your non-negotiables and the things that are most important to you. And it is, it's really a negotiation, you know, and Compromises have to be made, but I think it's for the good of all. But yeah, so that's a fun experience. So one of the things, though, that we know about selling a home is that, you know, when a buyer walks in, you want them to fall in love immediately with the home that they are thinking about buying. And for your sellers, staging and preparing a home can be a huge factor in, you know, getting the price that they want and getting it sold quickly. And making sure that it presents well to a universal audience. I always like this idea that in staging, you want to think in terms of um, 
if somebody walks in and are interested in buying your home, could they see themselves living there? Yep. And that's sometimes it's hard to do if the walls and walls covered with the photos of the family that currently lives there. And so I'm sure that decluttering and depersonalization of a home, of a property is really important and comes into play. And of course, that can be really emotionally difficult because no one wants to think that their home is not, you know, showcase ready or that they've made maybe some questionable design decisions. Yep. How do you approach that issue with clients? And also, can you give our listeners some advice on, you know, how to think in terms of of making a, a beautifully presentable home when they're yeah. getting ready to sell? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, from a KonMari perspective, it's not like buying. So with buying, you might have stuff you're moving, which you can prepare while you're waiting for clothes. You know, we can decide you want to buy a house, get you pre-approved in 24 hours, and then off we go house hunting. With selling, that KonMari and making sure you're decluttering, you know, whether it's over the years or however long you've been in your home you want to sell, doing that earlier on can definitely make the process much quicker. Because as you alluded to, buyers want a blank canvas. You know, they don't want to see your personal family photos. They don't want to see the really abstract art piece that looks odd. Um, They want it to be blank so they can envision themselves there. So generally speaking, from a practical perspective, unless it's some unique property that has uh, some feature, generally speaking, a neutral color palette, for example, with some pops of color um, is what we recommend. And that's been proven to sell homes quicker. And then just a lot of sellers, obviously, when you're going to buy a home, you're not really paying for a lot of fees out of your pocket. It's different in every state. But in Illinois, for example, a lot of the fees, whether it's commissions or transfer taxes, a lot of things are paid for by the seller. So when you go to sell, you already have a lot of expenses. And emotionally, that can be really overwhelming. And when I walk into a client's house and they want to sell and you know they need staging, it's not exactly the easiest conversation to say, hey, you know, for your three bedroom house, you know, for three months, it's going to cost you another three grand on top of that to stage. But once we break down the ROI in terms of that staging and how, for example, houses sell about 30% faster with staging, that's a statistic that is just general like knowledge that we like to share. It's a lot easier to kind of digest that. Now, every home doesn't need professional staging. That's a part of For example, something myself as well as our team and many other brokers offer is if they do have a unique eye for design and they've sold a lot of properties, it's very easy to say, okay, we need to get rid of this and and get rid of that and add this here and uh, maybe a plant here. But the gray area there is it's it is emotional, right? If you've been living in, you know, your home, for example, if you're an empty nester that's been living somewhere for 20 to 25 years and you have all these personal items, it's very hard and emotional if someone's telling you, you know, this doesn't work here, this doesn't work there. So usually we do pull in a professional staging professional. But staging doesn't mean necessarily that every piece you have is going to get replaced or changed. It's really just modifying. We try to take what you have and then subtract and add as necessary to make it as appealing to buyers. Most of the kind of stagings that I have done have been occupied stagings, which means just as you described, it's really just taking what a person has already in their home and making adjustments to depersonalize a little bit, but still make it look like a family home or, you know, get rid of some of the pieces of furniture that just seem a little excessive, but it almost always involves removing things. Exactly. Exactly. And it's thinking through, you know, it's a, a bit of marketing when you're selling. It's it's actually a lot of marketing who your ideal target audience is. And obviously as brokers, we have some insight, but a lot of times when sellers are buying their home, we ask them to think, where were you at in your life when you were going to sell? Because there's a high likelihood of that's the target audience for your property and we need to stage it accordingly. And again, I think that goes right back to the emotional aspect of buying a home. I would imagine because I just know my own experience of falling in love with a home and on the curb and just being determined that no matter what, I was going to own that place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes it's just something that someone sees in the house that really, you know, kind of creates an image for them that or a vision for them that really compels them to go further within the process. Exactly. And every buyer, you know, real estate, we compare it to comps. Comps just basically mean the properties around the subject property. So if you were selling a home, we would look at the comparable properties to, you know, come up with an estimated value. 
But in the last year, for example, even some of those comps have been just thrown off completely in a good way for sellers where we're seeing, you know, five to 10 offers on one property where the value is just crazy higher than what it was listed for because we're in such a low inventory market and property is worth what a buyer is willing to pay for it. So that can work for sellers in this market right now, for example, where we're kind of transitioning to a buyer's market. We're not quite there yet. We're still low inventory here in Chicago land, but sellers are still getting a pretty good price for their home in terms of ROI over the last several years. But it can also work against them, right? If you have a two-bedroom condo and it's, you know, maybe in a location where it doesn't warrant a $50,000 kitchen, when you go to sell, it's going back to that same point that your property is worth what someone will pay for it, not necessarily what's inside it. So just keeping that in mind, I think is important as well. And finding that target buyer, as you mentioned, is key. The question, does it spark joy, is a simple one, but not so easy to execute alone. Extend your tidying experience by joining the Spark Joy Club, our online community filled with our clients, fellow listeners, and Kamari enthusiasts ready to support your journey. If you find yourself buried under clothing, stuck on storage, or pointing fingers at untidy housemates or family members, we want to help you finish your tidying journey once and for all. Support the show at the Joy Riser level and receive access to our exclusive virtual community, as well as the Tidy Home Joy Journal, your number one tidying companion. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click on Join the Club to get started. And now back to the show. Wow. Just hearing you describe that is kind of taking me back to a place where I was buying and selling and uh, evoking those emotions that go along with like trying to figure out the market. And it's interesting because we talk about mindset and you have infused and really anchored your business on that mindset of gratitude. And that comes into play a lot when it comes to tidying and also buying and selling. Here at Spark Joy, we talk a lot about how Kanmari is a way of shifting and selecting and storing objects, but it's also a mindset shift to really aligning your space with your core values and with a lifestyle that you love. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great mindset to have. Yeah. And I imagine that comes into play a lot uh, when you're buying or selling. So we'd love to hear a little little bit more about how we can change our mindset around the lifestyle change that is buying and selling and getting comfortable with that investment. Yeah, that's a great question. So I would say from the home buyer side, preparing mentally, um, getting it on the right track is really kind of making sure you have the time and energy to focus on this. You know, when you're going to buy a home, especially you know, again, echoing back to what I said previously about the state of the market right now, very likely a house could come on the market Tuesday and it could be gone Wednesday and things are moving very quickly. (laughs) So you literally cannot wait for the weekend on the good properties or it's going to be gone. So making sure you have maybe the flexibility at work, making sure, you know, if you're traveling that, you know, we come up with a game plan. A lot of times these days with, for example, consultants we work with who are gone Monday through Thursday, we sold a lot of houses over FaceTime because they know if they wait, they're not going to get into that property. So we do the best we can with technology. And that's really helped from a buyer perspective, but making sure that you're ready for a quick pace transaction in multiple offers. A lot of times sellers closing quickly is important. So making sure your timeline is in line with expectations. So making sure you position yourself as a competitive buyer, I think is huge because that can help that emotional aspect because you're setting yourself up for success. On the sell side, That is definitely just as, if not more emotional, especially if you've built memories in a home or had kids in a home or a huge life thing. A lot of times, unfortunately, selling a home, you're not selling because you want to. You might have had a death in the family or a divorce. You know, a lot of our clients, unfortunately, are going through that. So selling a home can be just as emotional. I think preparing that and just understanding that you're listing your your house and it is your home to you, but to another buyer it's essentially a property that they want to make their home in. So kind of shifting that mindset to, okay, this is what this means to me, but to another buyer, they're going to create their own memories and they're going to have their own standards, which kind of goes back to the staging aspect as well. 
in terms of how to attract all of those buyers. Those are some really great things to keep in mind, I think, for both buyers and sellers here in New York City. I imagine this is true just about in every metropolitan area, maybe in a lot of places, but buyers are often confronted with the challenge of uh, the number of buyers who are able to pay full cash for an apartment. So it's really hard a lot of times to compete if you have to go through the mortgage process with someone who can make an all cash offer on a house. Mm -hmm. So it really is, you know, it's just really kind of setting expectations and being aware that it's definitely a process and that there, you know, it's a competitive market for really great property. So it, as a seller, you want to make sure that your your property is really, you know, shining above the other ones. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I mentioned earlier the importance of as a seller knowing your target buyer. And I think no matter what market you're in, whether it's Chicago or New York or somewhere else nationally, from a buying perspective, it's important to know your seller. Your agent should be doing their homework and trying to dig as much as possible to understand that seller. Are they an investor who did a quick flip where maybe they don't care about the emotion, they just care about the numbers? So you might not want to push them as hard on price. Or are they maybe sellers who have had their home there and you need to use a different strategy in terms of offering? So I'm not going to give away all our secrets, <laughs> but one thing <laughs> as a buyer I would recommend from that emotional aspect is writing a letter. We've seen a lot of success with that. And we've even beat out cash offers just on having buyers, our clients write a personalized letter that we submit to the seller because it is emotional. So sometimes that seller's like, wow, you know, agent or, you know, client X and client Y want to buy my house and they want to start a family here too, just like we did. And that can outbeat a cash offer if those sellers, you know, have built their home there. And many oftentimes it doesn't come down to price. It comes down to other factors and that doesn't always work. But I, I would mention that, you know, the emotional street works both ways and it can definitely work to your advantage in terms of winning your dream home. That is such a great tip. I love that idea. I'm going to keep that in mind for next time. I remembered a situation not too long ago where I drove by a house that I lived in that I owned 20 years ago in the country that I had built as a super modern, you know, very sleek looking house and loved that property. It had very modern interior. 20 years later, I drive by and the family that lives there now has completely country fried it. I mean, there's hay bales in the front yard. They have like big wagon wheel you know, like planters and all this stuff. And I was just devastated. I was like, what did you do to my house? <laughs> so so it really is an emotional thing. And yes. you get really attached to where you live. You know, it represents memories. It represents a huge investment and, you know, a big part of your life. So it definitely is a very emotional experience. Yeah, absolutely. So those were some great tips. Can you tell us what is your favorite tidying and or home staging tip? Yeah. So two different things. I would say home staging wise, echoing what I mentioned earlier, keep it neutral, blank canvas for a buyer to see themselves in your property, highlight the good stuff. You know, if you've got a big open window, for example, don't put a lot of stuff around it. Keep it open, make it a blank canvas so that the great things stand out. In terms of tidying, I think, you know, I've been fortunate to be able to listen and kind of dive into um, the KonMari method with uh, Kristen and all of the things she teaches. And I would definitely say in tying it back to KonMari, going step by step and not getting overwhelmed with the process. And that directly correlates to real estate because, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, just taking it step by step and kind of planning it back to your timeline. So if you're thinking of selling in six months, by all means, start tidying up right now and have a plan, have an action plan, have a goal go room by room, go drawer by drawer and start that process. So it'll be much smoother once you're ready to sell. Yes. So important to plan. It's not super glamorous yeah. or fun, but it's such a necessary step and can be really the difference between having an issue like buying or selling for years versus a couple months. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And before we let you go, we also want to ask you what's sparking the most joy for you at the this moment in your life? Yeah, that's a great question. I think with where I'm at in my life and my career, I think what's sparking joy is the living in the moment. It's something that my husband and I, I mentioned, I know you mentioned, Kristen, that we tie our business to gratitude and we do that in our personal life too. And a part of that is it's been a practice of mine to really live in the moment because it's hard when there's 
I just get excited for everything, whether it's a vacation or our house that closes in August. It's very hard not to every single day think about how I'm going to decorate my house, but I don't, you know, that's three, four months away. So I think what's sparking joy and what I'm, I'm working on personally is just really appreciating what's in the moment and each day by day and being grateful for that and that it's a part in the journey to whatever it is I'm looking forward to. Um, and in this instance, that, that key thing is kind of the anticipation of change into moving into a house that we're going to be at, you know, for a long time. It's really exciting to me, but also appreciating that this house we're in now you know, we spent our, our first few married years here and, uh, you know, we're, we're in the heart of the city. We, we purchased in a suburb. So trying to soak all that up. So kind of embracing the change, I would say is sparking some joy and also a challenge in terms of making sure that I'm living in the moment. Oh, that's great. Well, best of luck with your new acquisition and all that goes along with it. Thank you. Do you have any parting words of wisdom for our listeners? That's a great question. I would say parting words, just like what KonMari teaches, you know, the little things matter and sparking joy in terms of your personal life um, will only lead to better things in the real estate world. (laughs) Um, So whether you're moving, thinking of buying or selling or renting, making sure that all those ducks are in a row and you're planning for that is really important and will make for a smoother real estate transaction and for a better life. So it's kind of a win-win. Thank you, Kim. Great tips. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, guys. It was great to be here. To connect with Kim Howard, visit howardhomeschicago.com and find Kim on Facebook at Howard Homes Chicago. And exclusively for SparkJoy listeners, Kim is offering a $1,000 closing cost credit to listeners who buy or list with Howard Home Chicago, mention this episode of Spark Joy to redeem and save. So now we want to hear from you. Tell us your burning, tidying questions or share stories about how Kanmari has impacted your life. Head over to Apple Podcasts to subscribe and review the show, which helps us reach others along their tidying journeys. To extend your tidying experience, you can join the Spark Joy Club. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click join the club to become a member of the Spark Joy community. Or you can join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope your day sparks joy. Thank you for listening to Spark Joy with your hosts, Kristen Ivey of For the Love of Tidy in Chicago and Karen Sochi of The Serene Home in New York City. Spark Joy, the podcast, is not endorsed by or affiliated with Kamari Media Inc. The opinions expressed on this episode represent the views of the co-hosts and guests alone and do not represent the corporate position of Kamari Media Inc. or the Kamari Consultant Community.